So how are we going to characterize random processes? What we did with random variables was using distributions. Okay, we, we for discrete random variables, we had the PMF, or you can also use the CDF. And for continuous or mixed type, or in general, we had the PDF and the CDF to characterize random variables. Those were the distributions. And to characterize random processes, we are going to use the joint uh, distributions for uh, time samples, okay? The sample, the observation of a random process at a specific time instant, remember, is a random variable. This is a very important concept. If you sample a random process at a specific time, what you get is a random variable. So if you sample it at multiple time instants, what you get is a random vector. You have a number of random variables, so you can define the joint distribution of this, this observation, okay? Of course, for different types of random processes, we have different types of representations, but the idea is the same. You have the joint CDF, okay, um, of the observations obtained at T1, T2, T3, etc., up to T sub K. So this is a joint distribution of K random variables, which are K observations. And the definition is the exact same thing from our discussion in, in random vectors, in joint distributions. And of course, you can also define the joint PDF uh, through this differentiation. And for discrete time, um, you can still define the same uh, function, but of course your observations take place at epochs. It's not a continuous time, but it's discrete time. You, you just have uh, samples at uh, discrete time instance. Um, if your random process is discrete valued on the other hand, you have the alternative to define PMFs, probability mass function. So you have joint PMFs, and uh, depending on whether continuous time or discrete time, your observation points might be different. So here, in fact, you do not have anything new. We just have joint distributions, which we know from our discussion of random vectors. The only thing we have to know is how we can characterize random processes. If you sample them, at certain time instance, you obtain a random vector, okay? And the joint distribution of this random vector sort of describes how the random process behaves. Here's a simple example. Let Xn, a random process, be an IID Bernoulli P sequence. By the way, if your random process is a discrete time, we also sometimes call it a random sequence because it's it's a sequence. It's, it's not a continuous time function, but it's a sequence of outcomes. So sometimes we call it a random sequence. Here we have an IID Bernoulli sequence. So what does it mean? We have at every time epoch, at every index, a Bernoulli random variable with the same parameter. So they are identically distributed with the other time instance. Uh, but also they are independent, okay? The observation of uh, the, the, the outcomes of two different time indices are independent due to, due to this IID term here. So how can I write the joint distribution of two observations, Xn1 and Xn2? Now, you have to be careful about the time component here. It doesn't say anywhere that N1 and N2 have to be different. It, it could be that you are observing this random process at the same time, okay? So your samples might come from the same time instant. So it's a special case, the case where N1 and N2 are equal, in which case the PMF is this. If the outcome is one, the probability is P. If it is zero, the probability is one minus P. But be careful. For instance, when the time instants are the same, but the outcomes are not, that is an impossible event. You are observing the same uh, time instant. And I'm asking you the probability that one of the outcomes is zero, but the, out, the other outcome is one. That is impossible because it's the same time instant, okay? So for instance, 
uh, when n1 is equal to n2, but x1 is not equal to x2, then the probability is zero, okay? Which is in fact covered in, in this uh, case. Okay, that is for n1 equals n2. What if n1 and n2 are different? Now you have two different Bernoulli random variables. We know that they are IID. What does that mean? First of all, they are independent. And secondly, they have the same parameter. They are identically distributed. Since they are independent, um, the, their joint PMF will be in the product form. So if x1 and x2 are both one, the probability is p squared. If they are both zero, the probability is one minus p squared. And if they are zero, one or one zero, then the probability is p times one minus p. Another example is given here, let's say we have a random process, N of t. It's a Gaussian, okay, when observed at time t. And nt1 and nt2 are IID for different t1, t2. So this is a little bit similar to what we have just seen, the IID Bernoulli sequence. Um, the only difference is that this is a continuous time random process. So the, the samples you can observe are in continuous time. But if you observe this random process at two distinct and different time instants, the observations you make will be two independent but identically distributed random variables. Okay, so we can write their joint distribution as um, when T1 and T2 are equal, but X1 and X2 are different, similar to the earlier case, the PDF should be zero. I shouldn't observe such a case, okay? On the other hand, if X1 and X2 are the same and T1 is equal to T2, so I'm observing at the same time instant, then this is just the Gaussian distribution with this mean and variance, okay? However, if T1 and T2 are different, now I'm observing this random process at two different time instants. Now I have two different random variables as my observations. And I also know that since they are IID, they are independent and therefore we can use the product form, okay? Therefore multiply their PDFs to obtain their joint PDFs.